and I knew too where I stood for states' rights. But I did not want to see violence. I suggested a peace conference to which representatives from 21 states attended. Julia accompanied me to Washington, and I was elected president of the conference. It was a failure. And now I thoroughly cast my weight in favor of the South. In February of 1861, standing on the steps of the Exchange Hotel in Richmond, I called for the immediate secession of Virginia. This was the last chance for peace. See, I hoped that Virginia could bring with her several border states and possibly even New Jersey. Thus, the Confederacy would be so strong that the North would dare not attack it. On April 17th, Virginia seceded. But the other states I was hoping for did not follow. War was imminent. John's family entered into the conflict with a vengeance. His and Letitia's three sons played their part. The eldest, Robert, served as Register of the Treasury for the Confederacy. Major John Tyler Jr. was assistant to the Secretary of War, and their youngest son, Taswell, became a surgeon in the Army. Many in-laws, grandchildren, and other relatives served as well. In November 1861, I was elected a Virginia representative to the Confederate Congress. In January of 62, I left for Richmond to take my seat. Well, I stayed behind to run the plantation. But days after John left, I had a dream that so frightened me, I rushed to join him in Richmond. John must have thought me crazy, but in my dream he walked into the room, looking deathly pale, holding his collar and tie and crying, Are you awake, dear? Come and hold my head. <laughs> John just laughed at my fears. But the next morning, I... I felt like I had caught a chill during the night, so I went downstairs to the dining room for a cup of tea. But I looked so bad, Julia had begged me to have that tea sent up. <laughs> but I refused. The next thing I heard was a commotion downstairs. I was later told that John had collapsed having breakfast. Moments later, he entered the room, holding his collar in his hand and looking deathly ill. Two days later, John suffered a stroke and died at the age of 71 on January 18, 1862. His body lay in state at the Confederate Congress and was buried not alongside his first wife, but in a plot next to James Monroe near Richmond, Virginia. In the North, John was considered a traitor and it would not be until 50 years after his death that the United States government would erect a monument over his grave.